Hi guys, and welcome back to our podcast, The Milk Round. This is our second episode of The Milk Round. Um, you can catch our first episode on our YouTube uh, channel that you're finding this one on. And to get to that, you can go through our different social medias, which Chris is going to go through for us just now. Well, if you're already on this one, then you'll know that our uh, YouTube account is Castle Milk Youth Complex. And it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications because that really helps our visibility on YouTube. Um, as far as Facebook's concerned, we have, oops, sorry, two sex. I'm just having a little technical thing here. Like the same, the same as I did last week with the uh, social medias. So the Facebook is Kelly Youth Complex Staff. The Twitter is Youth Complex CYC. Our Instagram is Youth underscore Complex. And TikTok is Kelly Youth Complex. And Brilliant. you can also get us at our email address, which is cycyouthteam at gmail.com. Yep. And we're still looking for suggestions from you guys. So just keep posting those um, on any of our social medias. Get in touch with us uh, and we're providing support on them as well. Uh, so if you didn't catch our first episode, which is on our YouTube, um, we spoke last week about lockdown, what we've been up to, what we suggest you guys could maybe try out, um, and then we went into a couple of news articles that were on last week. So um, one that you were, you spoke about was uh, the space launch um, yeah. from SpaceX, Chris, uh, which didn't go to plan when we no. first recorded our first episode, no. but it's finally went up, hasn't it? Yep, so they successfully launched on Saturday night. I think it was around about half eight, nine o'clock. Um, and I, I really thought, because they were saying it was like a 50-50 chance due to the weather, there was a few um, potential thunder clouds kicking about. But okay. they went with it and they got up there and it was making aviation history, really. Um I don't know if any of you's watched the launch. I watched the launch part of it because uh, I didn't make the mistake that my pal made the last, the first time round by watching it all day. Uh, <laughs> I kind of just tuned in about ten minutes before it, and it was all it was all good. Um, so they successfully launched. Uh, I don't know if any of you's noticed uh, kind of later on, as they were going higher and higher, that there was a. Uh, a kind of glittery dinosaur soft toy floating about. Yeah. So and was that quite important to the it's, yeah, it's quite important. Uh, it's it's a kind of I don't know if it's it's just an American tradition or a Russian, but they, they call it a zero gravity indicator. Uh, right. and they need something to kind of that isn't going to cause any damage to the instruments. And there's been a kind of um a tradition of taking up a kind of plush soft toy. I think there was like a, a mini Earth was used for one time, but this one was actually one of the astronauts' uh, son's soft toys. So uh, I think that was a, a pleased wee guy uh, seeing his soft toy Aye. floating about. First dinosaur in space. Aye. So the first dinosaur in space, I think. <laughs> um, I found out a few more things about this actually, which was quite interesting. So up until uh, 2011, um, the space shuttle program was finished, and between now and then, the NASA has had to purchase uh, seats on on the Russian rockets to get to the space station. Right, okay. So, how much Lee do you think a seat to the space station costs? Um, let's see, 1.5 million. That is a reasonably far off guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, it, if you want to take a trip to the International Space Station, you would need to pay eighty million dollars for that. That's a deal um, Another thing that I found out as well is that NASA um their spacesuits haven't actually really changed. I'm talking about the ones they go out and make repairs to the space station, the big heavy looking ones. They haven't, I don't think they've changed since roughly the kind of late 70s. And okay. uh, they're running out of these spacesuits. They initially made 25 of these suits and they're down to four operational suits right now. And the reason being is that some of the components that were used to build these suits 
the companies have literally went out of business. Oh, wow. So they can't recreate these uh, components. So um, you saw the guys going up in the, the kind of new jazzy SpaceX suits yeah. uh, that Elon Musk came up with. Uh, they're only good for like taking off and uh, with okay. that capsule. So I think they're still they're going to be developing a new generation of spacesuits. But right. uh, currently, I think how much you think uh, one of these older spacesuits is valued at right now? Bearing in mind it's eighty million just for a seat on uh, the, just for the seat. Uh -huh. So let's go for a suit, and they're quite rare as well, and they're quite hard to find the components of. Let's say, is it dearer than the the seat? Can I, can I ask that? No, it's not. It's okay. not dearer than the seat. Let's say. 20 million? You're close. It's 25 million right, take um, that. Take that. equivalent. So so space travel ain't cheap is no. the kind of thing. What they're, they're eventually trying to kind of do with this, because uh, in America, they put tenders out to lots of commercial uh, companies. So SpaceX, Elon Musk is the first company to uh, fulfill that uh, a manned space flight to the space station. Boeing are also in the contention, but they're still okay. way behind. But they're yep. eventually what they're wanting to do is uh, commercialize it so that you can actually buy a seat and take a trip into space. Uh, how do you fancy that, Lee? Would you? Uh, I don't know if I've got the money for that. I think I'll just stick to Turkey and Primark clothes or something, maybe. <laughs> Even if it was for a freebie? Oh, I'd love to. Would uh, you? I'd yeah. I, I loved space growing up. I was fascinated by it. My room was like my mum painted an astronaut on my wall that had a wee mirror in his helmet so that I looked like the astronaut. I was, was kind of a geek back then. Um, Same here. I'd yeah, I I love to go back up to space. I, d I don't think, uh, as much as I'm a geek, I'm fascinated by it. You could not pay me 25 million to get on one of those no. things. No, no chance. I wouldn't even go on a roller coaster lease. So oh, right. Okay. I I'm a fair, fair scaredy cat. Dodge them as far as I go. Uh, <laughs> and the fun fair, so uh, no, a space rocket, you're pulling about three G's in takeoff, yeah. Yeah. and it's a fair acceleration. If, if you watch the actual space launch, there was a little meter on the left hand side that was showing you the rate of acceleration, and it was scary stuff. Uh, scary stuff. But see, see, when these guys are going up, they go through years of training, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and I imagine the 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 ones if you want to buy a trip to the space station, would you need the training as well? Oh, absolutely. You'd need to train uh, right, quite right. extensively to, to even be that. able to go on it. You'd need to have a certain level of fitness right, um, okay. to withstand 3Gs even. And you see, yeah. You've seen it in the films when they put people in these spinning uh, the capsule spinning things. So or whatever uh, it is. that's to simulate um, like the forces. different four G-forces. So... I, rem I seem to remember a Brian Cox program where they put they put them up to I think it was, oh, it was something like crazy five or six Gs. We're trying to kind of simulate what it would be like to be on a moon on Jupiter because okay. of the huge gravitational force of Jupiter exerts on those moons. Yeah, and you just seen his face. It's just going <laughs> well, get, me off. Just... <laughs> get me off, get me off. You'd probably pass out, I guess, wouldn't you? If there was that much After a, I think there's a certain level of G-force that the human body can withstand. Right. You, you pass out, yeah. Uh, right. And it's, uh, I think when you're training to be a proper astronaut, they take you to that limit to see how long it, you take okay. to, to recover. So, uh, so the mission's going to so, go and things like that. So being an astronaut ain't easy. And no. flying to space ain't cheap, is the no. more of these stories. <laughs> well, I don't think Thomas Kick will be coming out soon. Um, I know they're bus, so they won't be looking to get any some space space travel. They might need soon. to diversify their business right now, so it might be <laughs> the perfect time, you know. Aye, that's true. Um, also, last week we spoke about um, phase one that came out um, from the Scottish government. We're into phase one of our COVID plan. Mm -hmm. um, and you spoke about what that meant to us, what we can do now, what it's kind of loose in lockdown to. Um, so if you could you just go over that for us? Well, I, th I think it's kind of, I think it's probably, we went over it quite extensively last week. So if you, if you want to check that out, check out our first uh, podcast. But 
I think probably what, what it's meant to, what I've observed in the last week since it's been lifted is that there's people are, are meeting outside. Uh, I've he also heard on the grapevine that all McDonald's drive throughs are opening. So there yeah. may be a, a large queue in uh, Castle Milk Shopping Centre. Uh, I think I'm there may sure. be. Sure, might be good. If anyone can get a picture of that, please send it to us yeah. Yeah. Uh, on our social medias. Um, yeah, I think generally that's the main kind of thing that people are able to actually meet each other, whether that yeah. be outside. I've personally still been avoiding parks and stuff like that because I'm okay. using my better judgment because they seem notoriously busy right now. Um, yeah. But I think what I feel, you were saying last week was great. You were kind of saying, pick a place that you don't think is going to be as busy, mm -hmm. like a, a park or um, mm -hmm. the woodland areas about cast milk mm -hmm. um, or the football pitches or whatever, um, mm -hmm. because most people will flock to there and then it's harder to socially distance, I suppose, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think uh, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, maybe today or it was yesterday, um, it was... Uh, what I was taking from it, she was saying that if you're meeting up today, uh, this weekend, either take your raincoat and your wellies or don't meet up at all. Right. Because okay. the weather isn't going to be great this weekend. So it's horrible think lifting the restrictions last weekend was great because the, the weather was great and more yeah. favourable to it. But it is very tempting and it's human nature to go, well, oh, the weather's not so good. Well, it's not going to, it's not going to do any harm. And and statistically, it's a lot more likely you would become infected in an enclosed area than outdoors. So that's yeah. the reason. That's the reason why they're allowing you to meet outdoors and not inside. Yeah. Excellent. So that was last week on our podcast. Yep. Um, we haven't covered everything that we've done last week because we still want you to go over and watch it <laughs> or listen to it or whatever. <laughs> um, and there's plenty more um, than just those two, those, those two stories. But this week, we've decided to speak about a bit of the news again, haven't we? Yeah. Um, also, what we've been up to this week, just give you, let's you guys get to know us a wee bit more as well, what we do in our spare time. Um, and then we're going to do our sections, which your section went down quite well. I heard a few people speaking about it. A few people texted me after they watched it. Nice. and enjoyed them. Um, what's on my telly and what's on my belly. And I've got a wee quiz for you at the end as well. So. Ooh. Some bizarre news stories that have happened recently. So, um, if we just go into what our first point is then, I've got what we've been up to this week. Um, so I'll start off if you want. Sure. Um, like you say, the weather was brilliant. Uh, so I was enjoying the weather a bit too much. Uh, and I had, on one of the first days of the great weather, I decided when I was working to put, um, when I was online on the youth page, to put, that some safety um, guidance on keeping safe in the sun. Okay. <laughs> I think I should have followed those guidelines myself <laughs> because I got quite burnt. Um, so it was just things like reapply, keep applying sun cream, stay indoors between, I think they've, they've put the guidance to 11 and 4 just now, or 12 and 4. Mm -hmm. um, wear clothes that covers you quite a lot. So I was out and like, rolling up my sleeves and wearing shorts and mm -hmm. <laughs> put on sun cream once in the morning, I think, and forgot to wear it again, and I was out all day, so I didn't help. But it's turned into tan now. Um, Wonderful. So the three days of pain were worth it. <laughs> so you're not, you're, not a, you're not a burner then? You don't burn I, in I, the sun? I burn initially, if I haven't been in the sun for a while. So in the summer, if, if we get a good summer at the start, I'll tan. Um, but if it's been like... Like it's been this year, we've not had it great at the start of the year. It's not been terrible weather, but it's not been too sunny. Um, so I've burned initially, so I've got like a day and a half where it's burnt, but it just turns to tan right after that, so I'm quite lucky. What about you? Do you, do you tan or do you burn? Uh, I, I kind of tan. I'm, I'm something similar to you. I think that most Scottish people that say that they tan are probably similar. If they're not in contact with the sun much, then yep. uh, you have to be a bit more kind of careful. But yeah, I've been, I've been kind of doing something very similar um so but the the, the unfortunate uh, kind of consequence of it i suppose is i've got a really nice wee kind of sun lounger thing that i keep out in my shed and bring it out when it's nice and sunny but um it doesn't allow you to turn so right. so 
I am literally a game of two halves. <laughs> One half of my legs, the front half, is like a beautiful tanned colour. <laughs> and then I've got the peely wally whiteness on the other side. And the <laughs> same can be said for my arms. I don't know if you can see that there and then that uh, there. That's, a that's great basically <laughs> replicated throughout almost yeah, my entire body. So, right, okay. Yeah, good look. <laughs> we got the... the as they were doing two of the kind of camping chairs, the ones that you would maybe take to festivals or whatever, yeah. um, two of them for £12 and we got them on Friday, I want to say, and then mm. I think that's our summer done. So we got a good three, four days out of them. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think I've got good feelings about this year because I think the, um, with everything that else that's happening in the world currently, I think we're due at least a nice wee bit of weather Aye. to take the edge off because that is one thing that is, is quite quick quite nice is ability just to sit out somewhere and, and get a bit yep. of sun and stuff like that. It sure makes it a bit easier uh, under lockdown, doesn't it? Aye, aye exactly. Um, so apart from sitting out in the sun and enjoying myself and burning and tanning, um, I've, I've not been doing much this week actually. I've kind of, like last week I was saying, I've been exercising more, I've lost a wee bit of motivation for that, but I'm going to try and get back into it. But um, nothing new for me this week. Um, just, I think it was it was too good to try and do any too much strenuous exercise, so yeah. I'll, I'll blame heat. <laughs> okay, yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> I, would, I, would say that, I would say that, I mean, it's pretty brutal trying to do a run or anything like that in there. Yeah. Although I did hear that... Uh, one of our staff members, I don't know if I'll mention, but I will not mention, but she did a 25 mile uh, cycle and wow. probably the kind of height of the, the weather. Oh, um, no. So she is a true hero amongst us, I think. That's brilliant, aye. Well done. <laughs> well done to that person. I'm not sure who it is, I've not heard that story, so brilliant. Well done to that person. Um, Anything else you've been doing this weekend? Than you I or? mean, it's been, it's really been dictated by the, the lovely weather we've had up till the last couple of days. So I've just been out in the garden with the kids and the family. Just, we had a barbecue as well. Okay. So oh, yeah. we did a barbecue, uh, uh, a socially distanced barbecue with some of our neighbours in our block. Uh, we prepared our food, then they prepared their food and we oh, sat yeah. in the garden. That Two meters nice. apart and had a had a wee had a wee chat and stuff like that, so it was good. Brilliant, good stuff. Uh, so that's what we've been up to this week. Also, this week we have been um, reading the news, and unfortunately, I'm guessing all the people watching or listening to this will know what's happened over in uh, the states. Um, unfortunately, the, the the death of George Floyd at the hands of a police officer. Well. It's now four police officers who have been charged with the murder of George Floyd, yeah. um, and it's caused protests throughout the world. Um, we're seeing it every day in our news, uh, news channels, every day in our Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, um, and the Black Lives Matter uh, movement has become stronger again through this. Um, so there's been protests in America mainly, but now they're moving to protest in Europe, so uh, London, Paris, Amsterdam have all had protests in the past few days, um, and I think there is a Scottish section of the Black Lives Matter movement who are trying to set things up in Scotland, but trying to keep it as safe as possible for protesters. Um, I read today that the Glasgow one was moved from Glasgow Green, it was cancelled from Glasgow Green and moved to George Square, and they're actually being very sensible about it and saying, if it's not close to you guys, don't feel the need to come out on public transport and things like that because of the COVID situation. Maybe protest in your own community, but do it safely um, following uh, social distancing guidelines and things like that. Um, so just some of your thoughts on the on the situation just now, Chris. Without, I don't think we're going to go too much into it because um, it's maybe we're not experts on the situation, but just a, a few of your thoughts, if that's okay. I think it's a, a intrinsic right for any person to uh, protest, uh, and I fully support that. Uh, I think as long as it's done safely, um, and what you're alluding to there, Lee, is that there are um, steps being taken to ensure the safety of protesters. 
Um, sometimes um, it just something like that. It just becomes too important not to basically. Yeah. But yep, but just please bear in mind the safety. It's obviously a terrible situation that has happened too many times in America, um, and something has to change basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My opinion. So. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Um, so we have been sent an article which helps us um, because it is an article which involves young Scottish black people who are having their say on the on the situation right now. And they're kind of letting white people in Scotland know what we can do to support their movement um, and their protests. So uh, one of the, what the very first question in the interview is, as a young black Scot, what do you want white people to know right now? And one of the young people said, I want them to know that the most they could do right now is just support us. Instead of turning it into a trend or some sort just to boost their own ego or to boost their following. Um, so I think what she's saying there is, don't do it for, I think the word is clout now on social media, don't do it mm -hmm. because it's cute. Actually support these people. Educate yourself, read about it, um, because it's, it's not just a, a black person problem, it's a humanity problem um, and that's also some of the some of the points that the young people have said after that um, the next question is what would you like to say to people of color right now uh, and when the young people say I would like to say this is our time this is our time to stand up and get our voices heard while we've got all this big kind of platform of course this has been happening for decades and decades I feel this is probably the best time um, so those guys just want to make sure that their voices are being heard um, but also they go on to mention that they want to do it in the safest way pro uh, possible. Um, just highlighting how we can help is just supporting them the full way um, as white people, but also they say the people of colour who can help um, can join in and have their voices heard. Uh, we've written a short comment from the Youth Complex um, just to say where we stand. Um, obviously, we, we can't be politicised in any way, but this is the statement we've went for. So, we at Casmo Youth Complex value diversity, equality, equity and inclusion. We understand and acknowledge that racism is real and harmful and in our work we aim to educate others on these issues. We encourage our community to be active in discouraging and dismantling inequality and discrimination of all forms and will continue this through our work within the complex, schools and streets of Casmo and the wider community. Sounds Perfect, a perfect yep. statement. I, I think we should maybe move on from that topic for now. Um, if you guys have any suggestions or any comments you'd like to send uh, to us um, to possibly touch on the next one, feel mm -hmm. free to send them through our social media. Um, and if you do have other interesting articles um, surrounding the, the protests, surrounding the Black Lives Matter movement, then please send us them. And as uh, Lee said earlier on, uh, we probably aren't best placed to make an extensive commentary on it, but if there's anyone who is interested um, that does have that experience um, and wants to come on, we would be more than happy to have you on the podcast. Definitely. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So our next thing is the big section, Chris. The thing that everyone's looking forward to in Mulgrew oh. episode two, <clears throat> the section that is what's on my telly and what's on my belly. I think we need a wee jingle for that, maybe. I think the music yeah, group could work on that. A wee I think jingle. We could work on that. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. I'm, I'm already getting ideas for it. So Excellent. between now and uh, between now and uh, next week, hopefully we'll have some sort of ideas for that. But so, would you like to go first this week, or would you like me to? To go. I'll go first because mine's just kind of boring this week. Um, so what's on your telly then, Lee? I'm, I'm going first because mine's is boring because last week you set it up with this brilliant flatbread and this amazing <laughs> TV show and then I kind of just went, I mm. made, a, it made some chicken burgers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, again, this week I'm being very boring. Um, so you've already mentioned what's in my belly, so we'll get to that next. But the first part is what's on my telly? So after finishing um, How to Get Away with Murder, we've decided to go for something lighter, me and my girlfriend, and we're watching it on Netflix, and it's called Community. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it. No, I have not. No. 
it's a comedy. It, it is a fifteen. Um, so not all of the young people that are maybe watching or listening to this um, are allowed to watch it. You may be allowed to watch it, um, but it's about a community college. Um, this guy who finds out that his degree isn't actually real because he got it from South America um, has been disbarred as a lawyer and has to go to community college to make up the modules to get his degree back. Uh, and he joins a study group or he creates a study group, um, which is initially to befriend a female character, <laughs> shall we say, um, and that turns into her inviting other people into the study group. So it ends up with seven uh, main characters. Um, it stars Donald Glover, who is might be yep. better known as Childish Gambino, mm -hmm. uh, Joe McHale, uh, and Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase? Chase. Oh <laughs> my God. You've just sold me. Right, Chevy probably. Chase. <laughs> I'm a child <laughs> of the 80s, so... Aye. 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 I watched it uh, maybe three, four years ago. Um, and then I put it on again two years ago with my girlfriend. She'd never seen it. She watched the first episode and she was like, no. Nah. And then last week she just went, should we try community again? And I was like, yes, <laughs> so excited for it. And she's fell in love with it. Um, so you're re-watching so, then? Like, yeah. You're re-watching, re -watching. okay. It, it's really easy to watch as well. It's 20 minute episodes and there's just silly stuff in it, but there's heartwarming stuff in it as well, I suppose. It's just a simple comedy um, and it's got lots of different movie references. Um, and what I love about it is the episodes are all so different. So in the first season, not so much, but um, near the end of it, they become so different. So I know they've got an animated um, episode, which is like 8-bit, like an old video game. Mm -hmm. They've got a clay episode. They've got a musical episode. They've got um, kind of like a Western style episode with paintball. They've got like a Game of Thrones style episode with fort building. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> um, the, I'd, I'd love to attend the community college that they attend. Uh, so I'd definitely recommend that. If you've, if you've got nothing to watch and you've got 20 minutes every day to watch an episode, then go for community on Netflix. Sounds good. Uh, uh, speaking about fort building there, that's another thing that I've done this week, building right, okay. a fort for my children to play in. Or as it would more accurately be, not to play in. Right, Just for okay. the fort to be there, but... The mere suggestion of dismantling the fort was met with a non-agreeable tone, let's say. Aye. But still no. would not spend any time in the fort. Right, just, okay. just want to have the fort in the front room. But <laughs> yeah, it's, fun, it's funny you mention that. Shall I talk about my TV programmes and then we'll go on? Or do you want to uh, tell, yeah. tell me what's uh, in your belly? I, it's, it's pretty boring again, so I'll call oh, it better. God. I want to lead it up to something actually good and exciting. And well, maybe... you're setting me up here, so I don't know. I don't know. Well, I bet you've probably made your own dinner because what's in my belly <laughs> is a McDonald's. <laughs> a McDonald's. I you got today, one. <laughs> today we were at um, we were at Wix picking something up there to decorate the the hall, um, and I was like, I had to break my girlfriend. I says, hey, I'm sure all the drive throughs open today. All the McDonald's drive throughs She's like, oh, really? And then her mum got back in the car and it was her mum that was driving. She was like, eh, oh. And she said, eh, oh, we're just going up the road now. And Brooke was like, eh, Lee says there's maybe a McDonald's near here that's open. So we, we drove around to the one that's in near the Wicks. It's Canvas Lang area. Um, and the queue wasn't actually too bad. I think we made, waited 11 minutes all in from the Reasonable. queue. That's and, very good. Eh, ordering and picking up our order. And even better, the order was correct. Everything was right. So we, right. we were worried in case we, we didn't get something right then had to go back into the queue. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. It's, sometimes you get a McDonald's and you're like, oh, that was rotten. But I think mm -hmm. after not having it for... Uh, well, before the lockdown, I don't think I had one for about four or five weeks. So it's maybe been about 15 weeks without a McDonald's. And that sounds sad now that I'm saying yeah. it out loud. But... I really enjoyed it. So that's so, what's in my belly. I'm so honest. absence makes the heart grow fonder. Exactly. And what you're telling me is your potential mother-in-law took you and your girlfriend for a happy meal. So what, <laughs> what toy did you get, Lee? What toy did you get in your happy meal? It was a wee troll doll. It was brilliant. I've got it here with me. No. <laughs> <laughs> and did they put you, did uh, your, the mother-in-law put you in the creche when you went to Wix? Uh, and, no, and she just left me in the car seat. 
Uh, oh, did she? Right. Okay. So she could watch me. <laughs> Left the music on, the windows Sorry. down. I, I, I'm being evil. I'm being evil. Just, I could see it as like, I can just imagine the pair of yous being in the back seat. And, Excited. And <laughs> mother-in-law being in the front going, I want to go first, I want to go first. <laughs> if yeah. you don't stop it, he's only getting a McDonald's. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to invigorate the fact that you didn't make your own food this week. That's all. I know. I know. So, so um, like, I'm like, I'm going to take the in section. So what's on, what's on my telly? I'm going to start with what's on my telly. So, okay. uh, going with recommendations. So it's had has been on my telly before. I know a lot of our young people uh, watched uh, Riverdale, and that's yep. not going to be my recommendation because I've not actually watched Riverdale. But I've watched another program which is in the extended universe of Riverdale, and it's a kind of okay. offshoot, and it's a remake of a program from the nineties. It's called uh, Sabrina. I think it's called The Fantastic Adventures of Sabrina or something like that. The full title, but if you look for that on Netflix, Sabrina, you'll get it. It's it's good fun, kind of like witchy, kind of supernaturally right. kind of yeah. stuff. It's not too challenging and in times like this i think it's a perfect tonic with regards to uh, a wee bit of escapism um, so so available on netflix but i've also prepared another one for all those guys that might not have netflix i'm just make, making an assumption everyone's got netflix yeah this is available on uh, all uh, is it all four now it used to be four od but uh, it's, chan yeah. it's channel four's on demand service it's a free service I believe, and if you, I think you might just need to sign up via an email address. And I found out, much to my joy, that they basically put the entire uh, collection of Buffy the Vampire Slayer on. Oh. Now, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a big, big program back in my heyday, and yeah. it is really good. It's Joss Whedon. Uh, it's how he kind of got his start, and he's went on to do much bigger things like the Avengers films and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I would definitely recommend it. I, I, I re-watched Buffy maybe about, God, even sounds like ages ago, maybe six, seven years ago. That's how really? old. I think it started in the 90s, Buffy. Um, it ha hasn't really aged that much apart from the music and like the kind of fashion style. But, but I was going to say that. is back in, so... Uh, yeah, so the music's great Buffy, in it, I think. Yeah, it's brilliant. Great stuff. Uh, uh, so check out Buffy on all four on-demand service. If you don't have Netflix, um, it's some good stuff. I had the spin-off Angel. Yep. It? Yeah, Aye. I watched that as well. That was pretty decent as well, if you're Aye. right into it. I don't believe that is on the four on-demand service. Okay. But um, I'm not sure where you could watch that now. To be no, honest. I'm not sure but, either. Um, yeah, there are my two what's on my telly suggestions. That's a good um, so what's in my belly this week? Well, what's in my belly this week, Lee, is a wee spaghetti carbonara, but the Glaswegian oh. spaghetti carbonara. And the reason yeah. I make a distinction between the two is that I think everyone in Glasgow or the UK believe that a carbonara is a kind of creamy, bacony, pasta -y kind of dish. Yeah. Which... Is, is the way that I've made it. But actually, if you're going for a proper Italian style, it's a very simple, it's, it's like bacon, which is, they use pancetta, it's Italian bacon, uh, a bit of garlic, and then they just add eggs to the warm right, pasta. Yeah. The, there's yeah. no cream involved in it, but um, okay. I've had it in Italy, and I think going in with the expectations of a UK carbonara, I was kind of a wee bit disappointed with it. So oh, I've right, been okay. making the, the cream version of it. Um, a really simple, quick dish to make. Fry a bit, chop a bit of bacon, fry it up, a bit of garlic in there. Then you put a bit of du some double cream and then great a healthy amount of Parmesan <laughs> all the time while your pasta is boiling. It doesn't have to be spaghetti, it can be any pasta. And then when you've got your kind of creamy, cheesy, bacony concoction, just dump that right into that pasta and mix it <laughs> up. A bit of black pepper. Mwah! Beautiful. Bella, some might say. Yeah, Bella Supreme. <laughs> um, I, I really like a carbonara. Um, I'm the same as you. I've had one in Italy and I've had one in Glasgow and homemade. 
Um, and I have to say the best one I've had is Oro on Commander Grod. Okay, yeah, I know what. Um, yeah. Beautiful. And it says on the menu, there's two types of carbonara. You can have the uh, spaghetti carbonara one, and it says in brackets Glaswegian style, or spaghetti carbonara two Italian style. So you've hit the nail on the head both. there. They do both. Aye. And I believe, I've heard on the grapevine, because Oro isn't too far away from where I live, as I think they've op- they're opening or have opened again for takeaway. Yeah, I think, maybe tomorrow, maybe the 5th of June. Oh, Thank you're you well up with it then. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Count the days. Counting the days. You know what? What's in my belly? No, I'm not going to make my own carbonara. I get right down to the oral and the life one. <laughs> I think um, the reason I chose that one, Lee, is because it's something that you can ha- pretty much have in your fridge already, and it'll keep for ages. Now, bacon, yeah. as long as it's sealed and it hasn't been opened, will keep for quite a long time, at yeah. least a few weeks. Um, if you get Elm Lee double cream, that will literally keep for months in your okay. uh, Parmesan cheese is another one that I think if there was a nuclear bomb that went off, there would be uh, cockroaches and uh, lumps of Parmesan cheese. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm, I'm, you could, you could, I think you could leave it there uh, for a few years and I think it'd be okay. But it's it's just one of those dishes. It's, it, you don't have to eat it right away. So if you're doing a shot, as long as you get a bit of parmesan cheese, a bit of bacon, a bit of cream, you can keep that in your fridge as a, an emergency if you've run out of food. Well, yeah. So that's the reason I chose that one. Brilliant. Excellent. And if you are looking for any of the recipes that you heard tonight, which is um, either spaghetti carbonara or a McDonald's drive through then <laughs> just hit us up on our social medias. Um, I'll give you directions to the closest McDonald's drive throughs to you. Um, if you send me your area. <laughs> uh, so after that section, I've got a nice wee news story from this week. Um, let's see if I can find it now. So this would be good if I can't find it. Oh, got it right away. So I was just scrolling through and the news is pretty serious right now. Um, on BBC News, home, uh, the homepage on BBC News, homepage on Sky News, homepage on other newspaper uh, online and the front pages of actual paper newspapers. Um, it's all quite sad stories, uh, quite emotional stories and serious stories. So one story that caught my eye was this wee story, and it's, it's really nice, it's short, um, but I think it's brilliant what these two guys are doing. So it's Derbyshire Brothers make cushions for tired key workers. So what these two brothers have done is spent some time during the lockdown making cushions for NHS workers and supermarket staff and giving it out to them. Um, so it's a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old, um, and they've sewn about 100 cushions already for key workers. Um, the younger one, the 7-year-old, has cerebral palsy, and he's been able to help sew in the cushions as well. Um, and the older one said, they're saving lots of lives, and when Reggie was being born, they saved his life as well. So we want to say thank you for it. Uh, so Amazing. that was just a wee... A wee news story to kind of cheer everyone up. I um, thought it was really nice. Uh, and if you guys can maybe do anything and show support, uh, we post on social media, or if you know some key workers, just give them a wee message or send a wee card, um, do some drawings for them. Um, and if you want to send it into us to be put up on the social media platforms, then do that as well, because it's really nice to be supporting these guys that are, that are working continuously to help us through, through this hard time. I've just, uh, you just put me in mind of something else there that's uh, a kind of a local thing um, that I noticed on Facebook, and I think it is school kids again. Uh, they okay. a company, and it's basically to raise money for the NHS. It's, it's called Donuts Direct, and what they do is they send you out uh, donuts and a decorating kit for your donuts, and right. the proceeds uh, go towards the NHS, which I, I just seem, I just came to my mind when you spoke about those young people making the cushions as well. So it's Glasgow based as well. So have a wee check out on Facebook, search Donuts Direct. Give them, at least give them a wee like on Facebook. You don't need to yeah. buy anything off them. And it's the same way anything. If you show a wee bit of support on social media, it costs nothing and it helps these good causes become more visible. Yep, yeah. always helps. Perfect. So that's some nice wee news stories coming out of kind of hard time right now. Um, what's next is maybe a wee bit dreaded for you because it is the quiz 
Mm-hmm. Now, I've not got a clever name like what's on my telly, what's on my belly. So, and, and I would have had a clever name if we had somebody actually coming on and join us, join them as a night. It was going to be Test the Guest, short and simple. And okay. just a wee quiz where you would go up against our guest and see who got the best out of five for answers. Um, so that's, that's basically what I've got is five questions on news stories that aren't headlines, but I've found them in the darkest, deepest parts of the newest websites. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, and that's ad- so that's an added incentive for potentially people that want to come on to the podcast. If, uh, you, if you want to uh, challenge me, uh, does that mean even regardless of tonight's outcome, it means I'm the champion? I? Uh, I don't know. You might still be able to lose. <laughs> I might get five out of five here. That's a good chance. It's a good chance. I might get six out of five. Yeah. See how well I do. <laughs> so the first question is, I think this was actually two weeks back, so I'm being a wee bit mean. The first two questions are like two or three weeks back, so okay. it's a, maybe a memory test as well. So question one, which type of bird did India officials capture after believing it had been trained by Pakistan as a spy? So basically the story is that this type of bird flew into India and officials captured it, believing it was a spy because it had a coat. Um, I think it was either written on its wing or it was round its collar um, for some spying reasons. I, I, I don't know if, if, if pigeons exist in these hotter climates, so I'm going with a pigeon. Right, well done, there's one. one, out of one. It's a <laughs> pigeon, eh? So basically, the, the, the pigeon was flown over the border uh, between Pakistan and India, and they caught it, and I think that's one of the best spies I've ever heard in my life, a pigeon, pigeon spy. It, rem- it reminds me of a story as well. Sorry to break off your quiz. No, uh, When I was at college, I was doing an access course in college, and we had to do, part of that was like doing English, um, equivalent to a higher English, and one of the things we had to do was a presentation to the class. Now, everyone... Uh, and the class mostly chose uh, the subject that they did. I was doing an access to science course, so they chose the thing that they did their science essay on, and it was fairly dry. So I chose um, my love and fascination with professional wrestling, so really the history of professional wrestling. And I kind of came off and I thought, totally ace that. And everyone (laughs) enjoyed it and stuff like that, the way I kind of put it over. I thought, totally ace that. And then... uh, one of my colleagues came on and she had a, she was basically a pigeon racer. And this is where it links to the question. She was a pigeon racer uh, and she was speaking about all that and it was dead interesting. But she'd actually brought one of her racing pigeons in, right, showed okay. her the class it and then basically chucked it out the window and it would find, <laughs> it basically found its way home. Yeah. Because that's what they're, they're trained homing to. Pigeons, a homing yeah. pigeon, A homing pigeon. Uh, but it's quite a serious business, I've heard. So uh, it is, eh? So they're quite clever. Think, quite clever at finding their way back to. I think they can win other pigeons from people by bringing them back to their home. And is it? Oh God! So, so, I yeah, knew some, that reminds me of something that she said. Yeah, uh, like it's that. wacky. So there you wacky. go, pigeons. <laughs> uh, well done. One out of one. Question two: A five-year-old boy was recently pulled over after driving his mum's car. But what type of Italian sports car was he driving to buy? So this young boy was caught in Utah by the police after driving his mum's car out of the garage and down the street because he was going to another state, California, to buy this type of car. What was it? And it was another Italian car he was going to buy? Yeah, Italian sports car. So what brand? A Lamborghini. What, were you between that and anything else in your head? A Ferrari. That was my mm. next one. Uh, it was a Lamborghini. How done to it? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to just say that I don't, I've not read these news stories. These are <laughs> okay. complete and utter guesses. So. <laughs> I texted you earlier about what, what quiz I was doing with you and you were like, right, I better search. <laughs> these news stories. No, you didn't. Books. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question three. This is like two days ago, I think. Which right, this is a bit unfair because I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it after I ask the question, okay? Which mm-hmm. British pop star was treated at A and E in London after falling off of her bike? Now, don't think of any 
pop stars that are going to be in the charts right now. Think back to maybe 2002 to 2004 was maybe her time. I might be totally off here. Um, she's English. I'm trying to give you as much help without giving it away. Um, but she isn't a modern day pop star. No. I think you've got me here, Lee, to be honest. Uh, and she's English, so you gave me a clue. Um, oh, she's English. <laughs> she might not be English now that I've seen oh, it. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is it Billy Piper? No. It was Sophie Ellis Baxter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. My cousin's a big fan of her. Right, okay. Yeah, I she's think she still, still she still releases music, so Okay. Yeah. She done some damage to her head. Uh, it looked quite nasty. So that uh, she actually put her Instagram picture up in black and white so it didn't look as gory for her followers to see. Um but she's doing better now. Uh, her husband's running around the clock apparently. That's her quote on her Instagram. Uh, yeah. so two out of three, still doing well. Okay, good. Um this next question might be a wee bit easier. Which model and TV reality star has hit back at Forbes after they claimed she was lying about her billionaire status? No, nah, no idea. <laughs> You've got me on reality but, TV. That's right. when I start to check out, you know. So when I'm saying reality TV, I'm not saying like a game show like um, Big Brother or anything. Don't think like that. I'm thinking more the US kind of reality TV where they follow people in the houses and things like that. Right, okay. Uh, Maybe a big famous family. Uh, oh, right, okay. Is it, is it an Osborne? <laughs> no, it was, it's a bit more modern than the Osbournes. See, this is, uh, this is where I really do check out here, you know, so. Uh, yep, okay, tell me. It's Kylie Jenner. Do you know okay. who that is? Oh, right, right. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a... Kardashian or Kardashian, whatever. Kardashian, yeah, sister of the Kardashians, yeah. I think. See, this, this reminds me of, like, uh, I think I'm probably okay to say this, to lift the veil of the youth complex a wee bit. So okay. for, for anyone out there that doesn't know uh, or hasn't worked at the youth complex, we have a weekly team meeting. And during Love Island season, um, there, there was always at the start of a team meeting an extensive conversation between everyone in the room about Love Island. Right. I couldn't I couldn't even tell you a thing about Love Island. And yeah. it was roughly around about the same time that Game of Thrones was starting to conclude. It was in its last season. And uh, they're all talking the top for a good t- time on about Love Island. I mean, anyone seen Game of Thrones? And uh, you could see Tumbleweed, tumbleweed <laughs> rolling across <laughs> the office. And Chris, we've got a meeting to start here. I'm good to see you. I Game know, I know. <laughs> and I, I, I just, I kind of said to him, Joe, I, I think I'm in the wrong team here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll have to get on Love Island soon. Maybe that's your way into the conversations. Well, I've got half a tan already for it, so I need to tan oh, myself fine. on the other side. So. And you can make yeah. spaghetti carbonara for other house guests. Yeah, yeah. It's nah. not selling. You're not selling it. A free nah, holiday, aye. free holiday, certainly. <laughs> free holiday, hi. It's no space as well, so you've not got far to go. <laughs> uh, question five, right? I've got confidence in you to get this one. Right, okay. Make it three out of five, which is a good score for the first week. It's reasonable. Which tourist attraction did Dominic Cummings visit whilst on his controversial trip to Durham? It's a castle. Yep, half a point. And it starts with a B. I'm going to say Balham Castle, something like that. I'm going to give you another shot. And how can I help you here? Uh, it's so amazing Mr. you can't Matthews, remember the name of the castle. Mr. Matthews makes turkey. All right. Is it Bernard Castle? Bernard, Bernard Ca- Castle. castle. Good, yeah. You were brilliant there. That was excellent. Bernard Castle. Where did you pluck that one from? I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> Pluck it, I like that. <laughs> I thought I was going to chicken out towards the end. Oh, <laughs> we should maybe end this. Session. <laughs> no, I don't know. Get... I've lost four subscribers already. <laughs> I thought that was an excellent joke. Oh. <laughs> Here's a fifth subscriber gun. That's it. They're just going down. down. I, parents are like, I'm not sending my way to that conference. <laughs> <laughs> if that's I know, the part, these terrible, terrible jokes. <laughs> yeah. 
what, what did you get there? Three out of five? Three out of five. Three That's out good. of five, reasonable. With a bit of help on number three, but there we yeah. go. So if anyone wants to come and challenge the champion, as I am right now, um, then, then you are more than welcome. Come and have a go. Aye. Brilliant. Happy days. So I think that's all we've got for this week. Um, what we want to do is just mention our social medias again to you guys so that you can get us on there and just hit us up with any suggestions, any topics that you want covered. And like we said earlier, if you guys know more on the kind of issues that were brought up tonight, I would like to come on and join us and speak about these issues. Um, more thoroughly then just give us a message on our social medias which are Chris I always so, pass this to you because I, I know <laughs> it's good with it uh, Ke- it's at Kelly Youth Complex staff on Facebook Twitter is Youth Complex CYC Instagram at Youth underscore Complex uh, TikTok is Kelly Youth Complex and you can email us at CYC Youth Team at gmail.com and if you're currently watching this then you're already on our YouTube channel, so congratulations. Please subscribe and ring the bell. Aye, notifications on. That's that. Perfect. So that is episode two done and dusted. Uh, we'll see you next week with episode three. I'm not quite sure what we're going to cover next week yet, but we'll put it up on our social media as what the topic will be um, before we before we record, so that you guys can ask any questions or whatever. Yep, and for everyone, just stay safe, and we will speak to you next week. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.